Hi, I'm Lauren Trees from ABQC, and I'm here to introduce a mini presentation from one of our 2021 Excellence in Knowledge Management recipients, Teach for America. And this was part of a recent KM show and tell that we did. And Teach for America has done a great job creating diagnostics to help local teams assess their KM capabilities and identify improvements to focus on. So this is Shannon Steffies of Teach for America demoing her team's tool and talking about how they use it. Thanks, Lauren. Well, I'm excited to be here today with our KM community and my colleagues from Teach for America that are out there in the audience somewhere, um, including my partner in all this work, Stevie Carnation. Um, so thanks for having us for the show and tell. We're gonna share with you today about our local KM um, diagnostic. So you can move to the next slide. Uh, so here at TFA, our people are generally bought in to the benefits of good knowledge management practices. Uh, they know if it will help them, they know they wanna be good at it, but our people also told us that uh, when they think about doing knowledge management, they don't really know where to get started. And even if they do know where to get started, they often don't know what to do to get better. Um, so the diagnostic that you're going to see a little bit about today is a tool to help um, them get better at knowledge management in the way that they want to. Um, and over the years, our org-wide KM team has developed a ton of tools, um, but we also can't efficiently get them to teams to implement um, in a way that meets them where they're at. Um, so this solution also helps us to get those tools in the hands of people understanding when they would even use them and for what purpose. Uh, we also have to account for capacity for my team. Um, we run a pretty lean KM shop at TFA. Uh, we're a nonprofit, so we always need to be thinking about the cost of any program. And at any given time, we operate with between two and three people for a staff of about 1,700. That includes our national office um, and about 50 regional field offices. And just for context, even before COVID, most of our staff worked at least some part of their work week remotely. Um, so that was an important consideration for us as we thought about these as well. Another area that the assessment itself supports um, is our efforts to monitor and measure our KM program. So it helps us to determine where we can increase standardization and adoption of the tools and practices that we want to get into people's hands. So in order to build a product that met all those needs, um, we needed to think about how we would do this um, for our entire enterprise KM program. Um, and we use APQC's Knowledge Management Capabilities Assessment Tool. Um, if you're not familiar with it, K KMCAT. Um, that's a central part of how our KM strategy is developed year over year. Um, so we loosely based it on that tool that worked for us at the enterprise level. Um, and if you're not using KMCAT for your program, I recommend it. It definitely supports our efforts to grow and helps us prioritize our work. Um, and we've been using it for about the past four years. Um, so last, we really wanted it to be easy for teams to interpret. So um, we wanted them to be able to use it on their own. So we kept the language simple, we kept the scoring simple, uh, we provided exemplars, exams, and resources that would help teams self-serve into improvement. Um, so let's take a look at the structure. You can go ahead and move to the next slide. Okay, so here is the basic framework and what is tracked. Um, so here you can see um, the, the five um, items that we're tracking across the top there. Um, this is based on some research that we did a few years ago that named four main KM problems and one condition for successful implementation. Um, so those are the column headers that are uh, the colored columns. Uh, so that is findability, meaning our people can't find what they're looking for. Uh, the second problem is expertise and experience capture. So we don't record what we know for reuse. The third is knowledge gaps. We don't know what we don't know, and we don't work to create the knowledge that fills those gaps. And then the last problem is content validation. Um, so our people don't know if they can trust the knowledge to be our best asset when they do find it. And then the last one um, is the culture, the conditions, and the support that's required to make knowledge management thrive. Uh, so each of these areas has a number of then actionable steps for growth, which are the rows below each problem that are numbered. So for example, if your team is looking at findability, you're asking questions around the degree to which your team is implementing a shared space for your files, employing a standard naming convention, controlling the permissions so that the right people have the right access, 
archiving outdated and obsolete content so that it isn't clogging up the system? And are people actually self-serving into the resources you've given them access to? So that's one example of some of the things you would be looking at as you get into just one of those categories. Um, and I'll name that one ex unexpected byproduct of this assessment came uh, from the value and support column. Um, so when people started doing this assessment, they, they were reporting back to us that this section was really challenging to score. Um, however, it prompted deep conversations about the actual function of their teams that otherwise might not have happened. Um, these might be things that are tangential to KM problems, but the assessment brought them to the surface. So one thing we heard back from one of the teams that took the, this, um, this assessment um, for number three in this section, um, number three, the full, uh, the full descriptor reads, we create psychologically safe conditions to share both successes and failures. Um, so this team had said to us, well, we don't know if we do this. Um, we don't even know how to go about finding out if our team feels psychologically safe to share. Um, so that prompted a lot of conversation within the team about why don't we know if our people feel like they are safe and what do we need to be able to do to assess that? Uh, and it also set the stage for people on that team to start talking about if they do or don't feel safe and why some staff were experiencing different levels of safety and so on. Um, so this section has been pretty profound for teams to dig into and has surfaced larger issues of culture just beyond knowledge management. Um, so let's take a look um, at the actual assessment itself. Here's an example of um, what you might look at as you're getting into the assessment and what our staff see. So I'm just gonna walk you through this one example of um, what one of the sections looks like. So up at the top in the dark blue box, you'll see the associated problem. In this case, uh, we're looking at knowledge gaps as the problem. And the positive behavior that we want to see if the problem is solved um, is that people know what they don't know and they work to eliminate the gaps. Um, so that's the problem. And then in the first column, you'll see one of the CAM practices that we believe needs to be standardized in order to solve the problem. Right now, you're seeing just one of the three practices for the knowledge gap section. Um, but this first practice in that section is knowledge mapping and gap analysis. And we've also included examples of what that looks like in practice for those that are new to the idea of knowledge mapping, have never heard of it before. Um, and then in the next two columns, you'll see there's a space to uh, score and record evidence. The evidence is important because we want them to be able to reference what was happening when they last scored themselves. And it gives us evidence of what is happening at the team level in different parts of the organization for our team to take a look at and see where are people um, experiencing success and where are people experiencing challenges and how can we either support that or capitalize on those successes. And then in the last column, you'll see the resources that we've developed and housed in our digital workplace that can help teams get started to guide them to the behaviors that we think will help in adopting this practice. Uh, so by creating this assessment, we also uncovered our own gaps for our knowledge management team. So we realized there were resources we had never created. Um, so there were problems we wanted solved. We wanted people to be doing things, but we've never actually given them the tools to do that. Um, so in this one, we had the tools for knowledge mapping, but we did not have any tools for what to do once you've identified a gap or even how to identify the gap. I knew we had to create tools for that um, if we wanted to see improvement. So it helped us also kind of do our own gap analysis in that way. Um, so once this assessment is completed, the team submits to org-wide KM, and then they can request a consult to make a plan of action or to get support um, for an area they've already identified for themselves to take steps on next. Um, and so for us, what's next is we are working to continue to socialize this tool across all our teams. Um, and we're looking to create a more dynamic technical interaction for staff that will also feed this data directly back to us and connect this to similar tools that we have other teams developing for other areas of organizational learning across, um, across our organization. So we're really excited to see where this goes and we would love to connect with others that are doing this work and continue to learn and grow with all of you.